please stand for our national anthem. Friends, welcome to the San Antonio Wind Symphony Concert this afternoon. We have a special concert prepared today. It references significant people and events in America's life of freedom. While these various music compositions present a wide range of emotions and historical moments, the music essentially offers us hope and a positive future. Our first piece is an inspired example of this hope. A Movement for Rosa, written by Mark Camphouse in 1992, honors civil rights heroine Rosa Parks. On December 1st, 1955, Rosa was arrested for refusing to give up her seat to a white man on a segregated city bus in Montgomery, Alabama. She earned the title Mother of a Movement, for her act of personal courage, sparking the civil rights movement of the 1950s. The music is written in three contrasting sections. Section one speaks to Rosa's early years, from her birth in February of 1913 through her marriage in 1932 to Raymond Parks. Section two portrays the years of racial strife in Montgomery and the quest for social equality. Section three, suggest a sense of quiet strength and serenity. The final measures of the work serve as an ominous reminder of racism lingering presence in modern America society. As Congressman John Conyers aptly said, Rosa Parks moved civil rights issues from the back of the bus to the front of America's conscience. Thank you. 
while we're adjusting, I have three people I would like to point out. Uh, I have Levi Pena, Isaac Pena, and Trinity Pettis. Would you please stand? this spring, but Isaac and Levi started playing with us a year ago, and in fact a little over a year ago, and they have been just a monumental addition to this group. They have held their own every inch of the way, and perhaps even farther than that. We are very thankful to have them. They are John Marshall's students. <laughs> Our next piece this afternoon is Lincoln Portrait by Aaron Copeland. Commissioned for the New York Philharmonic in 1942, Copeland was asked to write a musical portrait of an eminent American. Copeland included a narrator and used quote, quotes from Lincoln's letters and speeches as material in the third section of Lincoln Portrait. Lincoln Portrait was premiered by the Cincinnati Philharmonic Symphony Orchestra on May 14, 1942. Lincoln Portrait is from the time period that Copeland was writing in his Americana style. Between 1938 and the early 1950s, Copeland's music is recognized by his homage to the pioneering spirit of America. Other compositions from this time period are Rodeo, Appalachian Spring, Fanfare for the Common Man, and his film scores to The Red Pony, Of Mice and Men, and Our Town. Lincoln Portrait is divided into three sections. The first evokes an atmosphere of storytelling that Lincoln was known for. It invites the audience to settle in for a good story. While the opening is reminiscent of a legendary character, the middle section could be a picture from the countryside or small town America. It continues to build toward epic proportions and then makes a quiet transition to the third and final section. The narrator enters and begins, fellow citizens from Lincoln's State of the Union Address of 1862, and closes this musical portrait of Lincoln with his most famous quotes from the Gettysburg Address. Lincoln Portrait by Aaron Copeland.
citizens. We cannot escape history. That is what he said. That is what Abraham Lincoln said. Fellow citizens, we cannot escape history. We of this Congress and of this administration will be remembered in spite of ourselves. No personal significance or insignificance can spare one or another of us. The fiery trial through which we pass will light us down in honor or dishonor to the last generation. We, even we here, hold the power and bear the responsibility. He was born in Kentucky, raised in Indiana. He lived in Illinois, and this is what he said. This is what Abe Lincoln said. The dogmas of the quiet past are inadequate to the stormy present. The occasion is piled high with difficulty, and we must rise with the occasion. As our case is new, so we must think anew and act anew. We must disenthrall ourselves, and then we shall save our country. Standing erect, he was six feet four inches tall. And this is what he said. He said, it is the eternal struggle between two principles, right and wrong, throughout the world. It is the same spirit that says, you toil and earn bread, and I'll eat it, no matter in what shape it comes whether from the mouth of a king who seeks to bestride the people of his own nation and live by the fruit of their labor, or from one race of men as an apology for enslaving another race, it is the same tyrannical principle. Lincoln was a quiet man. Abe Lincoln was a quiet and melancholy man. But when he spoke of democracy, this is what he said. He said, as I would not be a slave, so I would not be a master. This expresses my idea of democracy. Whatever differs from this, to the extent of the difference, is no democracy.
Abraham Lincoln, 16th President of these United States, is everlasting in the memory of his countrymen. For on the battleground at Gettysburg, this is what he said. He said that from these honored dead, we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion. That we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, and that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people by the people and for the people shall not perish from the earth. Our final piece this afternoon, actually not our final piece, <laughs> our penultimate piece this afternoon, is an American elegy by Frank Tichelli. The dedication at the top of the An American, American Elegy Music States, composed in memory of those who lost their lives at Columbine High School on April 20th, 1999, and to honor the survivors. Its premiere was part of a commemorative concert given by the Columbine High School Band and the University of Colorado Wind Symphony. These program notes come from the composer's thoughts about this piece. An American elegy is, above all, an expression of hope. It is offered as a tribute to their great strength and courage in the face of a terrible tragedy. I hope the work can also serve as one reminder of how fragile and precious life is and how intimately connected we all are as human beings. Rarely has a work revealed itself to me with such powerful speed and clarity. The first eight bars of the main melody came to me fully formed in a dream. Virtually every element of the work was discovered within the span of about two weeks. The work begins at the bottom of the ensemble's register and ascends gradually to a heartfelt cry of hope. The main theme that follows, stated by the horns, reveals a more lyrical, lyrical serene side of the piece. A second theme based on a simple repeated harmonic pattern suggests yet another more poignant mood. These three moods, hope, serenity, and sadness become intertwined throughout the work, defining its complex expressive character. A four-part canon builds to a climactic quotation of the Columbine alma mater. The music recedes, and offstage a trumpeter is heard, suggesting 
a celestial voice, a heavenly message. The full ensemble returns with a final exalted statement of the main theme. Friends, Frank Tkelly's An American Elegy.
Before we play our last piece this afternoon, the band would like to thank the Marshall High School band directors, Kevin Tabb, Dan Bentley, and Brianna Freitas, the members of the Marshall Band and the administration of Marshall High School, who welcomed us here today and made this concert possible. If you would like to make a donation to the San Antonio Wind Symphony, please check out our website for the donation page and for other information. Thank you all for coming to this afternoon's concert, and I would invite you all to the San Antonio Wind Symphony's final concert of the season on May 21st at the University of the Incarnate Words Benack Music Center. Our final piece, Hosts of Freedom by Carl L. King. Carl King was born in 1891 in Ohio, and after a career of traveling with circus bands, he settled and died in Dodge City, Iowa, in 1971. His most famous march is Barnum and Bailey's favorite. He played cornet and baritone, but was primarily a circus bandsman and composer. He is to circus band music what John Philip Sousa is to military bands. King was essentially self-taught and left school after the eighth grade. He studied with a number of local military band musicians and by 1910, at age 19, King was playing professionally in circus bands. Carl King composed over 300 works, which included gallops, waltzes, overtures, serenades, rags, 188 marches, and screamers. He apparently liked composing under pressure, often by an oil lamp light in cramped circus tents. Hosts of Freedom was originally published in 1920. This march contains King's famous engaging melodies, bright counter melodies, and has interesting parts for all sections of the band. It retains much of the flavor of the big top, and it served as a last finale for many circus bands. <laughs> 